I'm going to show you how to make a 63% return on a $100,000 short-term rental property investment. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show. As I said, I'm going to show you, more specifically, I'm going to show my man, JD, out of state investor, how you, JD, can take 100 G's and make as high as 63% on your money working with me in our new short term rental program. Now, to be clear, brother, the numbers I've laid out in this video, uh, it's going to be like 108, right? <laughs> What's eight grand amongst friends, okay? 108, I believe, is the amount of money you're going to need to make a 63% return on that investment in our new rental property program, short-term rental property program, if everything goes according to plan. Now, that's the thing, right? This is a new program, and my goal with this video, not only to show you the investment opportunity, my goal is to show you where I'm at with this program, what I know, and more importantly than that, brother, what I don't know. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Now, before I can analyze the numbers on the short-term rental that I think is going to work for you. Before I can get into all the meat and all the details on this Airbnb type property, I got to be upfront with you and explain to you exactly where I am with the Airbnb VRBO short-term rental model, right? Because investors have been asking Holton Wise, have been asking me for a long time. I'm talking years, couple years now. Uh, if we do Airbnb, if we assist uh, investors, if we handle property management, and up till now, the answer's been no, okay? So you need to understand, this is a beta program. You are one of our very first customers who we are going into this business with, right? So is it going to work? I don't know. I have never done Airbnb before, but... I'm not just some random dude off the street, okay? Obviously, you're here because of our vast experience in the investment space, right? For anybody who is not aware, we are the number one. There's nobody even close to our presence in the Cleveland market of investing in turnkey and out-of-state type rentals, right? I have sold over $200 million worth of investment real estate in the Cleveland market we run the largest scattered site rental property portfolio in the market, right? I, myself personally, with my partner John Holton, the founder of Holton Wise, own about 20% of that portfolio. The rest we manage for people like you from all over the world. Flips, we do that. Full service property management, construction, insurance, title, the whole night. We are the absolute industry leader in the Cleveland market. So I'm not just some schmuck. But you need to know, this is the first foray into the Airbnb short-term rental space, right? So to really explain where I'm at with that, I got I to gotta bend your ear for a second and just take you down memory lane a little bit, okay? Now, myself and the other owner, John Holton, local boys, okay? We're from the Cleveland market, right? I grew up in a neighborhood called Old Brooklyn and then later Parma, right? Split my time as a kid in those two areas. John Holton grew up in Parma. Both John Holton and myself went to college in Parma, okay? That's a suburb of Cleveland. Now, we were not born rich, okay? No, no, no. Again, Parma, Old Brooklyn, CB neighborhoods, okay? So we started out boots, Bootstrapped our way to the top, okay? So when this business started, both John Holton and myself owned homes in Parma that we lived in. Both of those homes right now, they're valued, uh, you know, in the hundred to $175,000 range, those two homes. Neither of us live in those homes, okay? Both of us, through the building of Holton Wise over the last decade, 
uh, we're able to up our game, move into A-grade neighborhoods in the Cleveland market, right? For those of you uh, that are familiar with it and then for those of you that aren't, show notes below. I got a link to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. I grade all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale, right? F being the most risky and cheapest, A being the least risky and most expensive, right? Makes sense, okay? So check that out. It's a great resource for everybody, right? So we started off CB neighborhoods, right? As the business grew, our wealth grew, we moved into really nice houses in A-grade neighborhoods, but there were not mansions, okay? They were not mansions. Both my house and John Holton's house are valued uh, in between, I would say, the three hundred and the four hundred thousand dollar price point, and that's very important because, as we speak to you right now, both John Holden and myself uh, we're looking to upgrade again, and we're going to be utilizing those two homes, our personal holdings, as Airbnb test cases, okay? In addition to doing that, in addition to putting our own money into this program, we're offering you guys the opportunity to work with us, right? So right now, me personally, what I'm doing, I bought myself a big old 30-acre farm in the outskirts of the Cleveland area, right? And I'm building my fancy house over there, right? My forever home with the wife and the kids, okay? So once I'm completed with that rather large, lengthy project, my A-grade home in the three to 400K range will be in the Holton Wise Airbnb program. John has a similar uh, trajectory and path, right? He wants to be on the lake. The guy loves the water, okay? So he's building his big old mansion in the water. Then his home, will be put into this program. So we absolutely believe in this program, but as I speak to you right now, I do not have a track record of being in the short-term rental game. Now, we are offering you guys the opportunity to be in those same neighborhoods doing the same thing, right? I know a lot of you out there are thinking like, oh man, let's take these Section 8 houses and let's put them in the Airbnb program. It's going to be amazing. We're going to increase our ROI. No, 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 we're not doing that, okay? That is not going to happen. That is not what you're going to see from Holton Wise. I do not personally believe in that business model. I have abstained from getting into the Airbnb short-term rental model for, you know, like a couple years now. You guys have been asking for it, asking for it. And I've specifically chosen not to uh, work with investors in that way because I do not believe that running low income rentals where you're regularly putting in section 8 tenants into these properties i do not believe that to be a sustainable and profitable business model if that's what you guys are looking for unfortunately you're not going to get it here i own a ton of low income rentals as i've already explained right 20 percent of this big old portfolio personally owned by myself and john holton not one of my section 8 low income rentals is ever going to be put in the airbnb program if i will not put my own money into the business model because i don't believe in it i fucking sure as hell ain't gonna put your fucking money into it it's not how i do business i'm sorry I don't think it's going to make sense. I don't think it's going to work, right? The level of risk involved in those type of rentals on a short-term rental basis is insurmountable, right? If you watch the Tennis from Hell show, you see some wild stuff, right? Furnishing those types of properties, the amount of time the, the houses are empty, the fact that when you do a short-term rental, you're going to need to do uh, relatively like remote showings. It's not always going to be like a on-person showing like with a regular long-term rental. I just do not think the business has legs, guys. I think it's just going to be a loser. It is far too risky. The payoff is far too low. I don't believe it'll work, right? So... The only thing that I think makes sense is A-grade neighborhoods. Hence, both my personal home and John Holton's personal home are going to be the first Holton Wise owned properties in this program, right? So if you want to simultaneously go down that path with us targeting A-grade properties, we would be more than happy to work with you, right? Now, 
I have not proven this model yet, right? I'm proving it out with you. That's why we did the beta program, offered the discounts, offered to give you a video just like this for dirt cheap. Now, a couple things, right? I'm going to run over the numbers on a property that I think is going to be perfect on this, but some, some assumptions I am making when I do this, right? One of those assumptions, and this is the big, the big assumption, right? The vacancy rate, okay? We're going to be renting these things by the day or night, however you want to say it, okay? So I've done some extensive research, right, in gathering data, data that I've gotten directly from Airbnb. The neighborhoods we're targeting, the, 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 the entire county that we're, we're, we're going to lock in on, folks, has historically ran an Airbnb occupancy rate of 62%. Okay, that means we're going to be running a 38% vacancy rate. So when I break down these properties for you, that's the vacancy rate I'm going to be giving you, 38%. I just want to be upfront that you know I haven't proven that out. That is average. That is what they're seeing average. I like to think, being that Holton Wise is the absolute number one in our space, we will probably exceed what your average operator is doing, but... I like to aim low and overachieve. I don't want to give you something like we'll hit an 80% occupancy rate, right? Like I don't have any data to back that up. So we're going to go based upon the average occupancy rate. And we're going to need to deck these houses out, right? Take a look at these photos, okay? Now this is my actual home, right? A little before and after that master bath, right? The master bath before, it was usable, but it was dated. And then you see I banged out that big old shower, right? That's a luxury shower, right? You ain't ever seen a shower like that on this show before, right? And then take a look at the pictures of the kitchen, right? I got three stainless steel fridges in my kitchen, right? I got a full-size fridge, and then I got two bar fridges, right? These are the kind of things we're going to be aiming for, folks. We're going to be looking to wow these people, right? We are not going to get into the cheapest by-the-night room possible Section 8 low-income sleazebag short-term rental motel game. No, I already own a sex motel, and I got, I got what's going on with that in the show notes below, right? So that's, that's, that's not how we're going to compete in this space. We are not going to be competing on price, folks. We're going to be targeting high-end properties. We're going to be going for a high nightly rent, and we are going to get these customers by wowing them. We're not just going to give them a normal, boring, run-of-the-mill home. No, we are going to bang out a wow factor, right? When our customer base, right, maybe it's a family, lives a few states away, they're going into Cleveland for a family reunion, right? You know, maybe it's like, I don't know, three families, right? Like two sets, three sets of parents with all their kids, right? And they need somewhere to stay for the week, right? So you got three separate adult households splitting this money for the course of a week. We want to give them something great so they could see it like oh look at this house this is going to be a great house to have family dinners and just gather have a really great week stay while we're up in the cleveland market right that's what we're going for a premium product at a premium price in premium neighborhoods right that model it ain't gonna work if down the street from the house you got Section 8, Section 8, Section 8, crack house, whorehouse, Joe Crackhead walking down the fucking street, people breaking into the house every couple months, stealing the luxury appliances, the flat screen TVs we're putting in there. That model is too risky, right? We're going to be in neighborhoods where the crime level is like fucking zero, okay? High-end premium stuff. If that is something you can get behind, sit down, buckle up, because now I'm going to break out the actual numbers, the actual performance metrics right after this. You might be wondering why I'm walking around in a bikini. Because this is America, that's why. Land of the free, home of the brave, the land of opportunity. Like the opportunity to click the link below and start investing today. Welcome back. Thank you for sticking with me. I know this one is a long show, but it's an incredibly important to me that I'm as transparent and upfront and as thorough with you as possible. Because if you're going to be putting this kind of money into properties, 
I need you to know where I'm at and need you to see if the investment makes sense for you. So now let's get into the actual numbers of the property, okay? Now this property is one nice property, man. You guys don't ever see me talking about properties like this on the MLS Search and Analysis Show. 1981 Columbia Road, Westlake, Ohio, 44145. List price, $275,000. This is one hell of a house, man. Three beds, three baths, okay? This is a newer home in regards to ages, right? Built in 1997. You don't typically see really new houses like this in those older C-grade Cleveland rental neighborhoods, right? This is totally different. Almost exclusively landlord, or I'm sorry, almost exclusively owner-occupied is this neighborhood, right? This is where the wealthy people in the Cleveland market live. For example, uh, basketball fans, uh, you know, remember Zadrunas Ogowskis, Big Z? He lived in Westlake, Okay. Uh, Johnny Football, the, the Browns quarterback. I mean, he kind of fucking sucked, but, you know, he lived in Westlake. Uh, Travis Hafner from the Indians, right? This is uh, the town where they all lived in, right? Incredibly nice, okay? Here's what the listing agent had to say. This well-looked-after home offers three full bathrooms and a total of three spacious bedrooms. The generously-sized master suite provides an on seat bathroom and walk-in closet, which is currently being used as a dining room, may also function as a home office, or bedroom as it also has a closet and the convenience of a first floor full bathroom. The roomy kitchen has tons of cabinets and sleek granite countertops. The backyard offers the perfect amount of sun during the day thanks to a beautiful maple shade tree. Enjoy your outdoor time on the expansive deck with privacy lattice uh, on both sides providing an intimate place to sit and visit with friends or just enjoy some quiet time alone. The yard is surrounded by a wooden privacy fence that was nicely finished off in 2018 with the addition of a gate across the driveway, making the entire backyard completely enclosed. The detached garage is two and a half cars wide, providing plenty of room for storage. The turnaround in the front of the house provides extra parking for gatherings. That's key, right? We're going to be doing that kind of thing. That's what we're looking for. As if all that wasn't enough, the roof and the water heater were both new in 2020, and all appliances are included. The only thing missing is your offer, right? 2020, right? Those are 30-year items you don't got to worry about, right? So let's take a look at the pictures, right? It all sounds cool, okay? Right? Just super beautiful house, right? Tons of parking, right? We're dealing with people going on vacations. We're dealing with, like, family gatherings. Now, as far as needed repairs, the home doesn't need repairs, right? It's move-in ready, but we're going to do upgrades, right? We have to wow these people. Can't just be some regular house. Like, this is just like a regular house. It's nice, but we need to give them some type of a wow factor. Like this kitchen, it's it's okay, it's serviceable. But dude, we're going to be trying to get 500 a night, right? We need people scrolling through these when they're about to go on this family vacation. Like, wow, look at this one. This is going to make for one memorable vacation, one memorable week-long stay, right? That's what we need to do, okay? So, you know, we're going to be going through these properties on a case-by-case -case basis. Where can we put the wow in? In this one, I think we're going to want to put that wow factor in the kitchen and definitely in the bathroom, right? There's the furnace, hot water tank, hot water tank also new. That's great, but your guests don't care about that, right? What your guests care about is being wowed, right? So let me find this bathroom, right? This bathroom doesn't wow anybody, right? This one piece here, okay? Tub, shower, surround, yeah. Dude, give these people something they'd never had, right? Give them a full custom tile shower so they could be scrolling through the pictures like, wow, that's that's really nice. This is going to make for a really elegant vacation, right? We got to just wow them in the bathrooms, right? And then in the kitchen, like I said, we need to add some stuff. Like, here's another one, right? We need to wow them. This has to look like a fancy five-star motel bathroom, right? That's what we're going to want to do. This is great, though, right? The backyard. We need to focus on the outdoor space, right? Like, this is very important. This is where they're going to be sitting, hanging out, right? Remember, they're not living here, man. They're having experiences, right? Social experiences, right? So we need to get, like, a maybe, like, a gas fireplace, right? We need to get, like, a nice gas fireplace, built-in gas fireplace, built-in grill type thing, right? Maybe even work on some type of, uh, you know, roof covering, awning type deal, right? And then the rest of the backyard is great. If they got kids on vacation, you know, you got nice privacy fenced-in yard. They could bring their dogs on vacation, right? You can't bring a dog to a hotel, 
right, when you go out of town. But if you're going out of town for a family reunion for a week and you got Fido at home, you need to bring that son bitch with you, man. You could bring him to this property, fenced in yard, right? That's what we want to see, okay? So with that said, all right, we're going to need to spend some money. As far as list price go, I think it's a pretty good price. I think you're going to have to come in at 275 And then I want to spend thirty grand on renovations, right? Thirty grand. Now these are upgrades, right? Thirty grand. I think the money should be spent on some paint, getting them some like more wow factor type rooms, some very memorable things on that listing, and then we gotta wow them with some extremely nice showers and just really decking out that kitchen, man. Like super high end stuff, right? That's what I think we need. Then we got to drop another twenty on the furnishings, right? We need to provide beds for these people, right? We got three bedrooms. I think we need to have a couple of those bedrooms have multiple beds in them. Like one bedroom should probably have two bunk beds, right? So you can sleep four in that bedroom, and then we'll do the other two bedroom. You know, kind of like for your adults, there we'll just put big queen size beds in there. And then of course we need flat screen TVs, right? Like take the living room. I don't think you need to set it up like a regular living room where it's just like like one couch, one TV, like you're going to live there. No, I think we need to huge, gigantic, like 86-inch TVs, maybe put a couple in there, right? Really give these people a true vacation space. Remember, we have to treat this different than like somebody's living there, right? This house is specifically going to be for folks coming in, enjoying the company of their friends and family for a short period of time. And we need to give them that wow entertainment space, right? So we're going to put 30 into upgrades, another 20. So a total of 50, all in for three and a quarter. Now, what's that going to get us, right? Well, at $500 a night, which I have come up with that price based upon market comparables. I've done a lot of research through... Uh, the data that's out there relying heavily on data directly from Airbnb. We should be able to hit 500 a night. No problem for something this nice, this elegant, this high end, right? So that would be $15,500 a month or $186,000 a year. But before you get freaking excited, don't forget. This is Airbnb. This is short-term rentals. Yeah, we're going to hit 500 a night, but, dude, we're not going to rent this thing 30 days a month. No, we have to factor in the vacancy, right? And in this market, historically, what we should expect is a 38% vacancy, right? That's what Airbnb is saying across the board in this market on all their rentals, right? What's great about a company like Airbnb is they have done an extensive amount of legwork on the data, right? So... 38% vacancy. Do I personally believe Holton Wise is going to be able to hit above average numbers, right? If every other schmuck is hitting a 62% uh, occupancy rate, do I think Holton Wise will do better? Well, yeah, hell yeah, I do, because Holton Wise got into the rental game, the low-income rental game, and we blew apart the competition. There is nobody who was equal to what we're doing, right? Nobody's on our level. But I'm not going to come right out the gate and tell you that on an Airbnb when I don't have an Airbnb track record, right? So we're going to go with norms, right? Then, of course, you got the Airbnb fees. They're hovering around 3%. And now we're going to charge uh, the guests are going to pay cleaning fees, but, you know, it's probably going to end up being more than what the guests are paying, right? So anticipate spending about 1000 And then just like any other rental, you got taxes, you got insurance, you got utilities, right? You got to cover all the utilities here. You got to cover us doing the lawn care. And then you got our property management fee. Uh, for the Airbnb program, what I'm thinking right now, again, this could change down the road. It's not set in stone, but right now what we're thinking is a flat fee of $1,000 a month, right? So it doesn't matter. Uh, if your property rents for 400 a night or if it rents for 800 a night, we're not going to charge you more for the higher rentals because honestly, we want you to get the higher end rentals because I believe the nicer the rental, the higher the daily rate is, the lower your level of risk is, right? When you have people that are going to stay in your rental for a week and they have to come up with a couple thousand dollars, right? Like 500 times six is 3,000, right? Then you do a deposit, right? If these people got to come up with six grand just to go on a vacation to, to secure their spot, these are likely not people 
that don't have any money, that are not judgment-proof if they screwed anything up. These are likely highly responsible people, right? I keep talking about we're trying to have, like, parties and stuff here. I'm not looking for, like, the college rage fest, like, fucking beer bongs. No, we're looking for, like, family reunions, people with, like, kid responsible folks, right? We're not trying to get into the some dude who's, like, 21, doesn't have his own house, wants to throw a fucking kegger at one of our properties, right? No. If you want to try to do that, again, you can go with the lower income stuff in the C-grade neighborhoods. But we're not going to do that here because I think that's way too risky. So we're going to price out the bad apples. That's why we're going for premium properties, premium fixtures, premium prices, premium neighborhoods, right? Because I think you price out a lot of the riffraff, right? So with all that said, flat fee model. I won't penalize you by charging you more to get a nicer property because in my opinion you should try to get the nicest possible properties we have the most expensive properties in this market in my opinion will limit your risk the higher the price point the lower the risk in my opinion right so with that said of the scheduled right 15 and a half plus your cleaning fees okay i anticipate you bringing home, after everything, after factoring in the large vacancy, our fees, all the expenses, you bringing home approximately 6,554 on a completely passive basis. Holton Wise will be the super host. Holton Wise will literally do everything. You still get that 100% passive experience. That should be approximately 78600 58.40 on average for the year, right? So you're all in investment, folks. You paid 275. You invested an additional 50 in upgrades and furnishings. We're all into this bad boy at three and a quarter. You only need 108,750. We will get you a lender to put in a, a $206,000 mortgage on this, and that's nationwide. Doesn't matter what state you're in, folks. If you need lenders, I got a whole list. Shoot my team an email, right? So we're gonna get you $206,000 of low interest, fixed interest. 30 year money, right? I love um, the rental game because of the financing. Well, you only get 10 mortgages, folks. You only get 10 residential mortgages, right? One to four unit properties. So why burn all 10 year mortgages on $50,000 mortgages when you could burn them on $200,000, $300,000 mortgages, right? Doing all that, even after you pay your mortgages, this thing would project out a 63% annualized cash on cash return, right? A 24 cap. Still ran. Completely passive. And here's the best part. If for some reason we fall short of these conservative estimates that I've put together, you still own an A-grade property, premium upgrades, premium furnishings, and an A-grade neighborhood, right? So if for some reason your cash flow goals are not achieved via the short-term rental program, we just sell it to an owner-occupied buyer, right? and you get out of the investment without any loss, probably a little bit of a profit on the way out because these are premium neighborhoods, premium markets. We're dealing with premium buyers. You're not going to have vandalism and destruction. You're not going to have high risks of that stuff while these properties are vacant. So it's really, in my opinion, one of the most foolproof ways to enter the short-term rental business. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.